Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, after a boyfriend's passing, who is a spirit that returns to the living lover? What causes the crosses to turn upside down late at night in a bedroom? And a shadow person terrifies a young teen to the core. Those stories and more today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number. Real Ghost Stories Online. To share your real ghost stories with us, write it on the website. RealGhostStoriesOnline.com or email your audio file to me. If you want to support the show? Become an extra podcast person, an EPP. That's a supporter of our show at GhostPodcast.com. That's our extra podcast person website. You get all the bonus episodes, brand new ones every single week. Advanced episodes posted there as well as other exclusive content. Or at Patreon. You can do it through Patreon.com slash Real Ghost Stories. Five bucks a month gets you access to all that stuff. And I must remind everyone, we are getting so close to the August 11th show at the Crescent Hotel at Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Few tickets left. Very few. If you want one of the last ones, get them now. Go uh, to uh, realghoststoriesonline.com and you'll find the banner there. Click on it and uh, get them. It's going to be an awesome night. We'll do an episode of this show, an episode of the Grave Talks back-to-back, live Q&A, uh, whatever you want. Pictures, uh, we will do it. It'll be a grand old time at the Crescent, uh, and maybe we'll even have something creepy happen. Who knows? So, realghoststoriesonline.com. Tony and Carol Hughes joining you today, and how are you this fine day? Good. I have a question for you. Yeah. Or, or, I want you to comment on this. Okay. So I've lived with a friend of mine for a long time, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. I won't mention his name. So today on Facebook, I saw that he posted a picture and it's like, hey, I got some new mints. And <laughs> it was in a Ouija board container. Oh. And I'm like, he can't bring that Ouija board in, <laughs> even if it's like a little thing of mints. Yeah. Like, that's still creepy, right? It's like, creepy, but I think it's more so. Like leave them at work. The the Ouija boards are more <laughs> in the funny, in, yeah, but even even just mints. It's the intent, not 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 the board itself. So if he, yeah, if he started using like a Mentos uh, or a Tic Tac as a planchette on the board, you got a problem. But if I, I think it would just remains the mint container and nothing more, I think you should be okay. But just, just so keep- do you think if like you found a Ouija board at a garage sale and you just brought the Ouija board in without him in that thingy that whatever you just called it mm-hmm. and you just used it as decoration? <laughs> Not, That's okay. No, it, because who knows what that board had been used for if you're getting it at a garage sale. Um, that's That one could have something with it. But if it's something where you bought it at Toys R Us, if you found an open Toys R Us in Canada and you brought one home un, unopened, fully sealed, probably not going to have anything going on with it un, unless you use it. So, so you're saying the mint container mm-hmm. unused, it's okay. Yeah, as long as he didn't use a Tic Tac as a planchette to summon the dead. What the hell's a planchette? That that's little the thing. thing that you put your fingers on? Yeah, that's the thing. I never knew that. That's what it's called, a planchette. I don't know what I called it, just the thing. A thing, the yes. thing. Yeah, no, it's a planchette. That's what it is. But what if somebody in the store goes, oh, this is so funny, and then like they pretend that they're doing it? You know that actually... <laughs> Uh, there was a, even though it'd be really teeny tiny, but still, <laughs> yeah, I you got an argument that could happen. There was a uh, a haunted Toys R Us in California. Um, we even got stories from there over the years. It was on Unsolved Mysteries in the eighties, and I had brought it up on the show one day, and somebody wrote in or called in. It's been years, but they're like, I worked there. It was haunted. <laughs> <laughs> they oh they had they had some stories, and I believe they used uh, a Ouija board or something in one of the summonings. At least I believe that's how it was portrayed on Unsolved Mysteries back in the eighties. And uh, it was like, oh never my, never a good God. idea. Yeah, never a good idea. But I always I always kind of chuckled every time I walked through the Toys R Us, and there's the Ouija board right next to Candyland or something like that. And I didn't bring up the mint thing, like because I'm like maybe I'm better off of. 
I just assume it's at work, mm-hmm. you know, but if I come home and it's sitting out, like yeah. that's just not right. Hey, if you really want to be safe, I think the best thing is just don't, uh, just don't bring it in. Uh, or if I find it, okay. Okay. So say I find it just sitting there and then I throw it away mm-hmm. and then like in a trash far, far away. And then he's like, where's my little Ouija board mints? And I'm like, I don't know. There you go. I just leave it at that. I don't just, know. They're gone. Something took I guess, them. I guess you misplaced them. They have completely disappeared. I had something even creepier today that occurred, and I put a picture of it up on Facebook. I don't know if you saw it or not, uh, but uh, we were out on the deck, and uh, I'll send you the, I'll text you the picture right now so you can, okay. you can see it in its Did full. Did I see it on the Facebook? I don't know. I, I just texted it to you, so it should be to you as soon as the picture gets over there. Uh, we saw this thing. It says it went through uh, it, on our deck. <laughs> and like, oh, my God. A tarantula. What? Yep. This doesn't come through. Oh, there it is. Yeah. There oh it is. Oh my god. It is tarantula glory. And how it, big is that? It, it, about the size of like if you cut your fingers off and there's just a palm of your hand. <gasps> just yeah. a palm. Oh my god. Yeah, he was big. And uh so we did not kill him. Everyone should be happy to know that. We just kinda we had a like a, a lawn art going thing. away party <laughs> going away party talked to him for a little bit had a beer um <laughs> kind of shoot him away into the forest and he ran away uh but it was like the kids are out there playing and also this giant tarantula is out there sunning himself so oh my yeah God. i didn't know you had them in missouri i was just talking about them the other day and i even asked jen i'm like are there tarantulas here she's like yeah but they're mainly in the woods well we happen to live in the woods so yeah, you yeah. kind of do. We just kind of put a deck up into their space too. So I'm thinking it might have, uh, you know, uh, it maybe moved his habitat around. And he's like, "Where's my family?" And uh, it's like, "Sorry, pool party." So well, my thing would be like, I'd be the person taking a picture, going, "Does anybody know what kind of spider this is? It's six inches in diameter." And they'd be like, "It's a tarantula," and then I'd have to move, and it runs towards you. <laughs> yeah. I would, I'd be moving. Yeah. It was creepy. I I was surprisingly not as disturbed by it as I think I would have been years ago. I think I've just got kind of used to the wild animals here in the woods and I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat because we've heard wild boars and mountain lions and wolves and everything from our porch at night. So I'm just kind of like, I'm desensitized to it. Like the only thing that I think would really get me is if I saw a werewolf, if there was like Michael J. Fox was out there as Teen Wolf one night. That might make me change my mind about living in the Actually, woods. Actually, it wouldn't, because knowing you, you would be like, you're kidding me, Michael J. Fox? Let's is do an interview. You? Let's talk. Come here. This is awesome. <laughs> I do a podcast. Can you be on it? <laughs> right as soon as you're done eating people in the woods, let's... Let, no, don't worry about the blood around your face. It's all good. Just come on in. No, yeah. I want to do some Facebook Live, too. <laughs> Leave the blood. It'd be great. It'd be great. Yeah, I know you too well. You would not be terrified. You would uh, you would turn that into something. That's true. Be a show. Opportunity. <sighs> Living in the woods is fun. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's uh, jump over to our first uh, letter of the day. Uh, and it says, as soon as I get my creepy ass music playing, there we go. Hey guys, I recently discovered your podcast and I absolutely adore your show. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm sensitive, but I do have many ghost stories and tales, but today I'll start with this one. Over a decade ago, an ex-boyfriend of mine passed away tragically back home where I grew up. He was always special to me. I had a crush on him since middle school and had spoken to him only a handful of times before, early, uh, before uh, our early 20s. And we were uh, finally went on a date. I hadn't been home a long time, so I decided I would come back for his funeral. Where he died was on a highway less than a mile from my mom's house in a terrible collision that took his life instantly. After his funeral, I had a close girlfriend with me visiting at my mom's house. It was getting late, so we decided to go out to the garage and visit so we didn't keep anyone up in the house. We talked for hours about my ex. I just couldn't believe he was gone. He was so young and his whole life ahead of him. I remember telling my friend that I'd give anything to see him again, to say goodbye, to tell him I missed him, and tell him how I loved him. I believe they call that the bargaining stage of grief. 
Then out of nowhere, across the garage, a weed eater that was hanging on a utility hook literally fell to the ground like someone lifted this weed eater and dropped it. My boyfriend and I, or my friend and I, a bit uneasy, walked across the garage to where the weed eater laid on the floor and investigated. We were alone out there. Nobody else could have come in or out of the garage without us knowing, and even at that, they would have been in plain sight. No way in hell. It just fell off that hook. You really had to lift that thing and pull it off the hook. My friend was also freaked and sure that was my ex telling us he was there. She left in a panic. I not feel scared myself, but I did feel a strange feeling of comfort. I believe that was him. I never did have any other experiences on that same visit after that night. However, I've had a couple of dreams about him every now and then where we're just sitting talking together like old times. I do feel like he checks in on me from time to time, and that was him in the garage that night. What are your thoughts? I have so many other stories that I plan to write into you. I hope you read this on the show. I'll be listening. Thanks for doing what you do. You guys rock. I think you'd be a great person to comment on this because you've kind of, you didn't have a weed eater that fell, but you have uh, you know kind of relatable kinda story. Some weird shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, which we did an entire episode of. We did, yeah. Um, was this Christmas? Christmas last year? Was that when we did it? It was, no, it was the Halloween, Halloween episode. Yeah, Halloween last year. Yep. Yeah, so it's hard to tell because when something falls off the wall, like there's a lot of things that could have caused it to fall off the wall. Yeah. You know, so without seeing how it actually fell, you know, were the nails still in place? Like here we have little earthquakes and things happen. But it is weird that when they're talking about him, I thought she was going to say, and we, he always loved weed eating. And <laughs> I was going to think it was his like, weed. Aha, then for sure. <laughs> yeah. But the fact that, you know, the weed eater wasn't necessarily, a, I mean, he might have been a landscaper or something like that. Yeah. But, you know, if, I would really go, oh, my God, that definitely was him. If it would have been some connection or like the thing came rolling. Well, I wouldn't want the weed eater to turn on and come up to her because that would be dangerous. But you know what I'm saying? It's like there's a, a number of reasons it could have fallen off without mm-hmm. being there to see it. Sure. So I don't know. What do you think? I, I think just the timing of it and having a lot of garage equipment like that. When you, I mean, if you're sensible about those things, you, you hang them up on hooks that, that do take a little bit of oomph and lifting and, and navigating to get them off. Otherwise, they could just slip off and whatever. Um, you know, I've got shit in my garage walls that's never fallen off. Yeah, and it's been up there for years. Sure. So that I mean, it it it's one of those things where for something like that to fall off at that exact time when you're and right at that time. That, yeah, I, I think it was probably something to do with him. Uh, and the dream that. thing, I think that's totally a visit. I totally think that. Oh. Like those dreams are just different, and you wake up and it's just different. Like you feel like you just had a conversation with that person, and I think I think those are beautiful. I think when so you, yeah, that I totally think was him. When you know, you know when when those things mm-hmm. happen, and and that that's all that matters. It's uh, it's interesting. We're talking about lawn equipment and horror. I um, I was looking online uh, the other night. Uh, I was debating because uh, Livy, our, our oldest, she she enjoys horror movies now. And uh, so it's been kind of fun. We'll watch him at home. And she's the only other person in this house that likes horror movies other than me. And so we watched uh, like Halloween and things like that. And I saw the new Child's Play movie had come out, which is, of course, Chucky. And I was, oh, that's right. And I wanted to see the trailer before I took her to it. I mean, there's a line where like, OK, this is too much still. Um, and I think that one kind of crossed the line in the trailer of too much. And just the, the one that got me was there's a, a scene in the trailer where there's a rototiller, like a garden rototiller. And those things oh, are, no, are no. nasty. Those are like those like this. I have one and it scares me sometimes because it can almost kind of take off by itself. And uh, in it, it, it just showed the, the scene for one moment of a man laying on the ground and the rototiller like coming after the guy like to eat him, you know, from the legs up. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm just like, like oh. I would have nightmares about that. Yeah, and it's like, oh god, like that could happen. Now I'm afraid of my rototiller even more. 
I'm not afraid of hire somebody to do it. Not afraid of the tarantulas that may be living underneath the rototiller, but the rototiller itself, that's what freaks me out. So got to really hold on to that thing, too, because it just kind of has a mind of its own. Uh, 855-853-4802, the phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Write it on the website, Real Ghost Stories Online, with your real ghost story. Our next letter says, around 2015, I was 12 years old. It was late at night. I was walking from my house to my boyfriend's home. I always felt like someone was watching me. I wasn't scared. It took about an hour to walk to his house from mine. When I came to my boyfriend's house, my friends were always there. It was Halloween that night. We decided to do the Bloody Mary ritual. We didn't think it was real. All of us, it's four, were standing in front of the mirror. We did everything we could to get her to us, but nothing happened. We just thought it wasn't real until one of my friends had to go to the bathroom. and We heard a scream. I ran down the hallway and saw this creepy girl standing in front of us. She had long white hair and a long white dress. She looked like me when I was tired. She had something in her hand. It was a head. I was completely terrified. It was the head of my friend. I could feel the tears in my eyes. It was dead. Of course, he really wasn't. We went to bed again. We were always scared of that girl, Bloody Mary, to step into the bedroom. I fell asleep, but I woke up after an hour. I looked in front of me. My friend was there. He was alive again. I just wanted to give him a hug. At first, I thought I was dreaming, but I soon realized that I wasn't safe in this house. My boyfriend woke me up. He knew what I was thinking. We woke up with our friend. She was also very scared. She pointed at something on the wall behind us. Crosses. Upside down. Crosses. The devil was here. I think I peed in my pants. I was young and I didn't know that it was dangerous. My parents didn't know about this and they still don't know. You know that Bloody Mary is the creepiest girl in the world? Well, my boyfriend saw someone in the corner of the room. It said, Mary, Mom is home. We just stared at nothing. We took on some clothes and ran outside. The last thing we ever heard from the house was my friend screaming. We never came back there again, but it didn't end there. We also walked to my home. On the way to my home, we got followed, followed by something We couldn't see. Creepy enough, huh? The last thing that happened that night was everything went dark. The day after I woke up in the hospital, my boyfriend was happy with a text uh, text saying that I was alive. We never figured out what happened, but I know one thing. I'm still getting haunted to this day. So what do you think happened there where she saw the image of a, a female figure holding a severed head? And then, of course, it was just that. It was just an apparition. The friend really wasn't dead. Was that truly a ghostly figure that had to do with Bloody Mary? Or did they get themselves so amped up in this Halloween night that they kind of began to see things? Because that I, I've done that. And it's it's pretty chilling just how real some things can be sometimes. I mean, because because the Bloody Mary thing is kind of like what you think of is some kind of urban myth thing. That, yeah. And there's variations on it. So, you know, when I hear those stories, I immediately think, oh, yeah, right. But if somebody really did see that, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, you did do that, and then you start seeing weird stuff, but you did do that thinking you might see weird stuff. Yeah, and and that's where I'm coming from. I'm I'm not doubting that they had this experience, that she saw that. I'm just wondering what the origin of it is. Because when I was a kid, I remember watching Thriller about 40 times on VHS over and over and over. And then it was time to... Yeah, yeah, in one day, literally. Then I, I had to go to bed, and I swear to God, I can still picture it in my mind, there were zombies standing in front of the door to my bedroom. And it was the thriller zombies. I don't look back on that as my house was haunted and there was truly something there. I looked at it as my mind got so warped into this and I was just kind of into that stage that it, it, it you know, I saw it. It was a hallucination. Uh, yeah, because like how old did she say how old they were? She didn't, but they walked home. She had a boyfriend. I'd almost have to guess teenagers. Because I remember when I was like 
young and we'd have these sleepovers, at, you know, summer parties at somebody's house. Mm-hmm. And the girls would all work themselves up into some frenzy, like, I saw it too. I yeah. saw it too. And like, what? What did you all see? But so I can see that happening. But then why did she end up in the hospital? That's what I'd like to know. There's like kind of, there's almost like a chapter missing here as to how this happened, why this happened. I'm kind of surprised she was happy that the boyfriend texted and wasn't right there at her bedside. He texted me I, that I'm okay. It's great. Well, you know, teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you expect. Did it's you like, die or are you okay? Me. Yeah, exactly. Because soon, you know, people are going to get married just through text. It's like, <laughs> say your vows. I'm going to text him. I, Wait a minute. Did you get it yet? Okay. On, 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 on that same note, as we kind of transition over to another story, but on that same note, I am baffled by, um, you know, uh, online relationships. Now, I met my wife through Match. Or actually, it was, it was, we were on Match and eHarmony at the same time, but eHarmony is where we started talking a lot, um, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, but we thought, you know, back then, like, oh, wow, online dating, that's that's kind of a, a new thing. But now I've been watching that show Catfish on MTV, and it's kind of an addiction. I'll admit that. But I am baffled that people are just totally cool and totally checking the box of I'm in a committed relationship to people they've never met face to face for like years. It used to be one thing where it was like, oh, okay, you know, we're going to meet in a a couple months or whatever it may be. Like a couple months would have been a long time. But like, oh, yeah, I've been I'm in a serious relationship and I've been dating this person for five years, but I've never seen their face. What? (laughs) And it's like normal. It's somewhat common. I, I, I'm just like, what the hell happened in the last 10 years in the world of dating? Because it's like a completely different galaxy. And on the Dr. Phil show, those people have sent like $200,000 to that person. <laughs> that too, like, yeah. Why? Why would you do that? Yeah, but it, but it's, it wasn't to their name. It was their cousin who was in town who could yeah. pick it up for them. And there was no red flag. She was on her way to the airport and they got in that horrible car wreck. She had that brain injury. I had to pay the doctor bill. Exactly. And... <laughs> Then she lost her passport. Yeah. You know, it's the weirdest thing. Yeah. But so, yeah, I don't know about that story because it reads like one of those stories that you do hear mm-hmm. commonly. But then are the, I never I never know. Oh, it's uh, it, it's a hard one to uh, to decipher. I mean, it, it's it's the reality to that person. Uh, it, but it, it, as far as where, what was it? Was it truly something paranormal that was appearing, or was it the emotions that caused it? Uh, it really, we'll never know the answer to. Uh, it, they were walking away, and then the last thing they heard was their friend scream. Why was the friend still there? Like, no. hell no! I wouldn't be like, you guys go ahead. I'm gonna stay here. Exactly. Yeah. No, if you're going, I'm going. Uh, In fact, I'm gonna beat you out this red door. Thank you for writing in and sharing that one. 855-853-4802, the number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to the next one. It says, I'm writing in about something that happened to me or happens to me on a regular basis. Let me just start by saying that this is all, all has made me think that I was crazy to ex- the extent that I even went and spoke to my doctor about it. So about once a month, I see strange things in my room. Once I've woken up to a woman in a long nightgown standing over me while I slept. I can open my eyes and be fully awake. I blink numerous times to try and unsee her, but it takes half a minute of panicking and waking myself up completely to stop seeing her. It does not feel like sleep paralysis because I can talk and move. Other times I've woken up to see a long demonic looking finger opening my door and creeping in a shadow like thing walking past my doorway staring in at me as it also passed standing in the corner of my room all separate occasions the most recent thing to happen is i was lying down going to sleep and i felt the wind of someone walk past the side of my bed go around and then i felt someone get into the bed with me i turned around freaking out thinking some stranger was in my bed to find out there was no one there Other strange things happen. I'll see people walk past windows out of the corner of my eye at work, but I know that my other colleague is not anywhere near there, and there couldn't possibly be anyone else there, as 
or in an isolated spot. I live in Australia, and as everyone knows, we have spiders here. Well, at my work, our toilet is a shed. I never check under the seat for spiders, but one day, a voice popped into my head saying, you need to look under the seat, there's a spider. Sure enough, when I looked, there was one, and I never even think that there would be one under there. As much as you would have heard about there being spiders everywhere, I can assure you they're not. You don't bother checking these things when you've lived here your whole life. Another example of this has happened a few times. I've been ready to go to sleep and I get to the thought, your phone isn't charging. And I look and I had plugged my phone in, but the charger wasn't working. I've gotten so used to these things happening that it doesn't scare me much anymore. But I was just wondering if you've heard of anyone else having similar occurrences like mine. I'd love to hear any suggestions to what you might think of any of these things and what they may be. Sorry, it's all over the place and long. I think there's almost two things going on here. There's a, certainly a very strong intuition on on what's going on around this person. But I agreed. Yeah, and then there's a sensitivity to... I, I think in a way it does probably play hand in hand with the sensitivity and intuition. It's a heightened sense of awareness of things is what I think it comes down to. And probably is, you know, getting into that territory of being able to see things others may not, uh, including the dead. And that intuition thing is in a way kind of a blessing. Mm -hmm. But because I kind of have that. And whenever I have that, like, oh, I need to, like, well, I would never be able to pee there again if I found a spider right there. But, like, I always, like, you have to go with that voice. So anyone who gets that feeling, you always should go with it. Mm -hmm. If you have that weird feeling, like, I really should, you know, move that coffee pot I just sat there. Move it. Because there's a reason that you had that feeling. Sure. But it sounds like she just is very sensitive to a lot of energies around her, mm -hmm. you know, so she can see, I mean, like experience that. Yeah. Now, I, I agree. It's it's a very heightened sense that uh, that she's going with. So in some ways, I think a blessing, but in other ways, a curse with the fact that she's seeing those those horrible, creepy things in her room at night. I'd be very interested to know what the doctor said and, and how they handled it. Not that I doubt the story at all, but I'm more so curious as to what a doctor would say when someone comes in and says those yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. That... Uh, you know, I I really would genuinely like to know that. So if you want to share that part of the story, I'd love to hear it. Uh, and you know, it does bring up a point too. like, I wonder if people, cause I'm pretty sensitive to stuff and, and I've had those things happen, like those weird feelings, like I need to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that comes from, but it's just like this voice in your head mm -hmm. or something. I wonder if people, if that's kind of common with people who are sensitive to things like you know, if they do get those weird feelings. Probably, and they probably don't connect it to one to the other, but I think they're all somewhat in the same realm. Because I have definitely had them where it's been more when I was in, a, like, harm's way, and it was like an actual voice. The others are more just like feelings. Like, mm -hmm. I shouldn't do that. And, or you did it, and then you thought, well, I shouldn't put that there, and then it fell over. Sure. But... So I don't know, you know, maybe it is somebody kind of feeding you those thoughts or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, it, it's hard to know until you have more of the context of that uh, that individual story. Good one, though. Thank you for sharing it with us. 855-853-4802, the phone number and Real Ghost Stories Online to share your ghost stories with us. Hi. This is Christina calling from Houston, Texas. I'm just calling to tell you one of the stories that I have. I have quite a few, but there is this one in particular that I'd like to start off with, and then I'll call back and tell you guys my other stories. Um, okay, so the first story that I would like to share was when I was living in Indiana with my mom at the time, and we were in this apartment or the corner apartment and no one lived right next to us at all. The nearest neighbor would be about three apartments down. So 
when we moved in, as every family, you would, you know, explore the house, get to know the house, but there's something off um, when I felt it right away. So, of course, when I went upstairs, there's this room in particular that made me feel kind of a little like I shouldn't be in the room. And so after a couple, I would say not even uh, a month of living there, I started feeling weird. Um, I would start hearing the voices of children uh, laughing like a little girl and a little boy. Um, When I would go downstairs, I would hear the laughter of kids going up the stairs past me and then vice versa. If I would go down, they would go up. But at the same time, when they would go, when I would go downstairs, it would feel like a breeze past me and then I would hear giggling. So in the, there's this one time that I went in this little room that I told you guys that I was feeling off at and I was going on the computer because my mom treated that as a computer room and my mom didn't sleep in there. She slept in my room and we had a bunk bed. Um, but let me get to the room. Um, so in the room we, where we had the computer, um, I closed the door, not thinking anything of it, and was going on the computer, playing some video games and stuff like that. And then I had to go up and go to the bathroom. Um, right when I opened the door, tried to open the door, it wouldn't open. And on the other side, I heard like giggling and it kind of like freaked me out also because the door wouldn't open. I was already used to the point of the kids laughter because they would brush by me when, you know, and I didn't think anything of any harm by that, but not opening the door kind of freaked me out. And mind you, I'm on the second floor. So this next part is kind of creepy because it's stuck by me all throughout my life and it's burnt in my brain. So I'm on the second floor. And so I kind of like have this weird, odd feeling and I turn around and I'm on the second floor and I see out the window, this guy kind of dressed like in like this button up. 18th century type of clothing and he's holding a watch and then he's like oh my gosh I'm sorry I'm getting goosebumps um he he looks straight at me and he starts laughing and I'm already at the door so I'm like shaking the door I don't want to look back but I I freak out and I'm like please open the door please open the door I just bolt out go downstairs and go outside and I freak out and I, yeah, like it totally freaked me out. I ended up waiting a few minutes and instead of like going back inside the house of where my mom and I lived. And yeah, I went and grabbed the phone eventually and then called my cousin outside, say, hey, I need you to come here. I need you to come here. And she ended up coming, but I was not wanting to go back in that room at all whatsoever. I do have more stories in that place and more stories period throughout my life uh, that I would like to call back and share. Um, But yeah, that part with that man that was floating on the second floor pretty much really creeped me out. But yeah, I do have more stories there where I live that I'd like to share and I'd like to call back for other stories. Um, Yeah. So I hope you guys did enjoy that one, and I hope to hear this on a future episode. Thoughts? Okay, there's a couple thoughts. And one is that that's why I really like hearing people tell a story. Mm -hmm. Because when you listen to that, like the ones that the Bloody Mary one a little bit ago, it's like, is it really a real story? But then when you hear her, you're like, you can hear it in her voice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm also the girl that lived in a creepy house at the basement or the um, bathroom door would do that. And I would get so scared. I would have to run outside. And that was always my go-to thing. It would be like, I just want to run outside. I just got to get outside. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah, that one kind of gave me goosebumps, too, because as she was telling the story, I was totally relating to that story. I mean, it's a, it's a creepy experience. I mean, for, for anyone, and, and but then that's true, your, your point about hearing someone in their voice and you can just tell, yeah, yeah this person is, is going through some hell right now. And the thing is about the Bloody Mary story, we if we'd actually not saying that you were bad at reading the story, mm -hmm. but there's something about hearing someone tell their own story. Sure. That you hear that and it's like you hear that in her voice, like it just happened to her. And how she said it was etched in her brain. It is. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. Like those are things that you never, ever, ever forget. No, you can't unsee it. And then when you get to be the recipient of the story, you can't unhear some of it as well. Yeah. And the, you know, like, cause there's things that happened when we lived in that house as a kid that there's chunks of my childhood. I don't remember, mm -hmm. but I do remember that, you know, there's one time when something would happen. Sure. Is like, it just sticks with you. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it, it's chilling. There's a, a story that, um, I don't know if we've had any of his calls on episodes you've been on, uh, Glenn, who's a security guard. Uh, and, and he, if you were to just read his accounts, you'd be like, that's a little too fantastical. Um, but then you hear he calls in and he's been posting the videos onto our real ghost stories online, Facebook group page, uh, from the security cameras of this building that he's been guarding and you go, Oh my God, this is real. And it is it is chilling. He just sent me a message on Facebook while we were playing that callback, and he, I guess, just called in and gave us a new update. Um, and we'll air that on a, I think, probably next week's show sometime. But uh, it, it, it's just this kind of saga that's being drawn out of. There's some weird things I'm catching on my security camera. To people are quitting the security guard uh, business here at this building because they can't cope with what they're running into. Uh, and it's, it's really starting to take his toll, uh, on him mentally. And I, we we're just kind of messaging back and forth of maybe it's time to kind of, you know, call it quits or something. Cause this is, it's getting bad, but it's a very fascinating story. I think it's going to be one of those where towards the end of the year, I may do like a retrospective and a whole episode where we just play the calls back in chronological order. That would be a good episode. And yeah. I, Cause he has, we have done, okay. you and I have done shows with him and it could be like a great Halloween episode. Yeah. It, it could where be very you can repost some of those videos and stuff. And so people can go see for themselves and everything's in one place. Yeah. He had one the other day that he posted on uh, the Facebook group page and I was trying to, um, uh, trying to find it the other day with uh, with Jen, and she's like, "I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it." And I, I didn't get to find it while we were on the air, but it was him, and he was like in a downstairs. I don't know. I don't know what room it was, but some people had reported hearing people wandering around there. So he went down there with his camera and his flashlight, his rolling tape, and uh, in this room, you just you hear this creepy voice you, you can't quite make out exactly what it's saying but it's definitely something that shouldn't be there and it's not a person it's one of the better you know examples of ghost audio that i think i've ever heard i'm, I'm always the one who doesn't hear it when people play them back for me but this was like oh holy shit that is creepy and i'm, I'm scrolling through it right now seeing if i can get to it and i probably won't be but it is if on our uh, facebook group page Darn you all for being so active. It takes forever to find anything now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's great that everybody loves the page and is very active. Um, but uh, yeah, it's back here somewhere. But it's good. It, it, it's very interesting. And I hesitate to go like, oh, this is great. Like from a producer standpoint, like this is great material. But like from a standpoint of this is your job and you have to go there every day and work. I do not envy you, Glenn, whatsoever. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't live like that. No. Because it really is a terrifying feeling. It is. And I, 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 I'm, I'm very grateful that he, he contributes to the show with his experiences. Um, but I, I feel very bad for him for what he has to go through on a daily basis. Because it, it looks, it would just be so, so damn stressful to experience all that all the time. I'm not coming across it. It's probably. Well, and I'd be bad. like, you don't even need a security guard here, really. No, I mean. <laughs> You know, whatever's here is going to scare the shit out of everybody. So you don't need me. Exactly. It's just, it, it, he's he's posting the videos all the time, and they're always very, 
Very compelling. I'm saying I found one of his posts. I'm seeing if I can see the one. Is this it? No, that's just a creaky door. Maybe it's this one. It was almost like a Chewbacca door creak. It says, please excuse the elevator door. Here here. It's almost like, yeah, this, uh, this, Good night. this might be a different one, but, but I'm going to be completely quiet here. Take a listen to this. And it, what you're you're listening for is almost in the. I don't know if this is the one I saw the other day, but this is definitely another one that's creepy as hell. Um, this j- just listen silently to the the background of what uh, almost sounds like just audio interference. You in here? It's almost like a weird, weird growling that's being picked up on a very high frequency. I bet if you played with the audio on that, you could clear that up a bit. But and it's got this weird underwater sound. Yeah, to it. that's the the. To me, what it sounds like is when I I run a filter through something to try and pull out all the excess noise in a room. Yeah. That's sometimes what you kind of get is that weird uh, high pitched sound to it. But yeah, it, yeah, anyway, he's got good stuff, and there'll be a new uh, new story from him very soon, uh, hopefully here uh, in the next week or so. But uh, anyway, that's going to uh, wrap up the program for today. If you like the show, keep us on the air and become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories and uh, keep the show on the air until next time for carol hughes i'm tony bruski thanks for listening to another episode of real ghost stories online